Okay, great. So uh, yesterday, what we discussed, this was the last slide which we discussed yesterday. I was telling about yes. the first aspect of the accounting definition, that is the recording. Yesterday, as we discussed that accounting is the name of recording, analyzing classification and summarizing and then presenting the financial transaction with the business. So we shall, re uh, we shall start recording today. I we shall learn how to record the transactions of the business. Well, uh, this is, these are the five accounting heads which we discussed that every transaction falls into this accounting head. Number one is capital, second is liability, asset, income, and expense. These are the five accounting heads. Every transaction fall into any one or more of the accounting heads. What we have to do, we have to identify that uh, what is the, which is the accounting head to which the transaction relates. We have to identify this. Once we are able to identify the accounting head of the transaction, it means we, we have almost learned, yeah, it means we have almost learned the almost 60, 70% of financial accounting. We have learned this. This is the basic of financial accounting and this is very important that how to record the transaction. So, uh, as this slide was discussed yesterday, I will move forward to the next slide in which we shall discuss that how to record the transactions. So again, I have written these the same accounting heads in the vertical format of capital. Whenever there is a transaction, uh, these there, there is a resultant increase or decrease in one of these accounting heads. Whenever, whenever we have a transaction, any account is affected, there might be an increase in this account or there might be a decrease in this account. So uh, for the purpose of recording, you consider that you have a page and it has a two sides. One is the left side and one is the right side. So left side of the page, we call it debit and right side of the, of the page, we call it credit. The accounting, in accounting terminology, Anything written in the left side of the books of accounts that is known as debit and anything written on the right side of the books of accounts that is known as credit. Well, uh, as far as capital is concerned, if there is an increase in capital as a result of any transaction, how capital can be increased? Once the owner introduced a new capital in the business, cap there is an increase in capital or even if it is increased later on, additional capital is introduced, again, capital is credit. And whenever owner draws amount from the capital, owner gets the amount back from the capital, the capital head is decreased with the business. So whenever it increases, we will record it as a credit entry, means we will record it on the right side of the page. And whenever it is decreased, we will record it on the left side of the page. Debit means left side of the page. Credit means right side of the page. Just to understand that what debit credit is, just consider it a left and the right side. Debit is left and credit is right. So it means whenever there is an increase in capital, we will record it as a credit entry means on the right side of the books of account. And whenever there is a decrease in capital, we shall record it as a debit entry. Same is the concept of liability. As I told you yesterday, that capital and liability are the same. Capital is also liability of the business. Keeping in view the separate entity concept, business is separate from the owner. It means whatever the owner invests in the business, business has to pay that back to owner. So it is also a liability of the business. But as this amount is payable to the owner, we shall record it separate uh, from the other liability. So as the, the concept is the same, so recording is also same. Whenever there is increase in liability, we shall record it as a credit entry. And whenever there is a decrease, we shall record it as a debit entry. Means whenever liability is increased, we will record it on the right side of the page. And whenever it is decreased, we shall record it on the left side of the page. Well, uh, as assets are the opposite to the liability. I mean, liability is something which a business has to pay to someone. Uh, on the other hand, on, in contrast, asset is someone which business owns, which is, uh, which is for the business itself. 
uh, for which business can have benefit that's asset so it is opposite to the liability so as far as recording is concerned the concept is opposite to the liability means whenever there is an increase in asset we shall record as a debit entry mean we shall record it on the left side and whenever there is an in decrease in the asset uh, of the business we shall record it as a credit entry this is the main technicality to identify the uh, effect of the transaction any transaction j- just as i told you yesterday that every transaction has two effect we have to identify both the effect and then we have to relate both the effects whether there is an increase or decrease in any of these accounting heads okay moving to next that is income whenever there is an increase in income it is a credit entry means we shall record it on the right side and whenever there is a decrease of income in the business we shall record it on the debit side means on the left side of the business Uh, well expense is opposite to income recording is also opposite to the income whenever there is an increase in expense it's a debit entry whenever decrease in, a, in an expense it's a credit entry these are the accounting rules rules for the recording which is known as double entry concept means we have to record every transaction twice every transaction has two effects and we have to record them both but where we have to record we have to record one effect on the left side which will be known as the debit and the other effect has to be recorded on the right side which is known as a credit effect well uh, what what is wh- how we can identify that there is an increase in capital or decrease in capital or liability or asset or income or expense this is a matter of practice once we shall have practice of this definitely we will be able to identify that how we can record that just let me see uh, the charts well hi hi sir hi hi everyone lecture is in progress so please focus thank you so much bye bye okay moving to the next slide just for your reminder i have again explained these accounting heads what is capital that is the investment by the owner into business in any form but in monetary terms so remember if you have to start a business whatever you invest whatever you wish you can invest in the in the business but that wish must be in a monetary form so you cannot invest a promise uh, let's say you say uh, i i am going i will invest my loyalty no you cannot invest that although you can invest that but in financial accounting that does not have any monetary effect so we will not record that loyalty you have you can invest a building building might have a value so you can invest a building into a business you can invest a machinery you can invest cash you can invest car anything anything which has any monetary value you can invest that thing and for the business perspective that is known as capital then is the liability liability anything owed by the business to someone anything which business has to give to someone else that is known as liability as we already discussed there are two types of liability one is the current liability any liability payable within within one accounting period yeah guys i am going to mute you guys there is some noise just because of you uh, not because of you because of your mic sorry so uh there are two types of liability as we discussed one is the current liability and the second is the non current liability any amount payable within one accounting period that is known as current liability and any amount payable uh, in more than one accounting period that is known as non current liability next are the asset well uh, there is a, a comprehensive definition of liability as well the simple definition is anything owed by the business to someone but let's look at the comprehensive definition as i already told you that you have to identify that uh, what is the effect of a transaction what which accounting head is going to be increased or decreased so for that you have to understand the concept of each accounting head you must understand what are the accounting heads 
if you understand those cons those accounting heads then it's the only way you you will be able to identify uh, the increase in or decrease in that accounting head so what is the liability if there is a past event occurred which created what what is what is what it created a present obligation which can be settled through a future outflow of economic benefits and it can be by the liability so well, guys we have four parts of this definition uh you can remember these four past by present so past present and future we just remember these four things past present future and then a reliable measurement so what is past there to be recorded as a liability there must be a past event means if you come today and say sir you have to give me 5000 dollar Oh, I will ask, guy. Oh, when I when did I borrow that from you? Or what was the past event which created this my obligation? So you have to show a past event. If there is no past event, there is no liability. If you say, sir, there is no such event, but you have to give me. So it's a baseless statement. So uh, there must be a past event. If there is no past event, there is no liability. Well, there not only there must be a past event. but that event must have created a present obligation means there was an event we went into a transaction and that transaction created a legal obligation on me i am obliged i am liable to pay you something this is the second aspect if there is a past event but it did not create any current uh, uh, present obligation even then if there is no liability well second portion and the third one this obligation must be settled by future outflow of economic benefits means uh, if i i have to outflow some of the cash some of the asset or anything which can give benefit to me but i have to outflow i have to give that benefit to you so that our liability is settled so to settle my present obligation i definitely either give you cash or i will give i i will give you some of my asset i will give i will say that please take my car or take my bike instead of the cash i don't have the cash presently or i can say that i will pay you within one week there is some amount which is uh, ought to or due to come to me i will pay it to you so these are the future benefits which i will outflow to you so this is the third condition to record as liability so if there is a past event which has created a present obligation but you don't need to have any outflow of future uh, future economic benefits then again it's not a liability so all three conditions must be met including this the first four one in the fourth one as well that is can be measured reliably means if any amount cannot be measured reliably it cannot be recorded as a liability if you say sir you remember we had a past transaction i say yes i remember you say sir that past event created a present obligation on you i say okay yes that there is an obligation on me uh, you say sir you have to outflow the benefit i will say it's okay i will uh, get some benefits outflow Uh, so then i will ask okay guy how much i have to pay you say sir i don't know the amount cannot be measured we cannot estimate that amount so if there is a no estimation what i will pay so it means these are the four conditions which must be met to create a liability so once we shall go through the transactions you have to identify each and every transactions on these four tests if the transaction passed all four pass, passes all four tests then it can be recorded as a liability well moving on to the next asset the simplest definition of asset is anything owned by the business anything which business owns that is its asset but again going through a very comprehensive uh, definition just like liability again a past event occurred which created the same sentence which we uh, written for the liability which created a present resource so so for the liability it was a present obligation 
to be an asset. It is a present resource. A resource is something which, from which we can achieve some benefits, which can generate future economic benefits. So the resource must be such that it can generate a future benefit. If there is a past event which has created some resource, but which is no use, which is of no use, which cannot give us any benefit. So we will not record that as an asset. So it can give future economic benefits. And the fourth one can be measured reliably. Again, just like liability, the four conditions to remember it's past, present, and future, and reliable measurement. So past, there must be a past event. There must be a present resource. There must be a future economic benefits. And those benefits should be measured reliably. I will give you an example of uh, a Pakistani politician recently. It's not a recent, it was in Panama case. Uh, he, actually, uh, he actually denied her sal his salary from the company of his son's account that it's not uh, his asset. He did not, he, he never received that. Well, if we, uh, if we check that transaction on these four conditions, so let's uh, have uh, that transaction passed on these tests. Is, is there a past event? Yeah, he got a job documentarily. He was appointed as at some designation in the company of his son. So there was a past event. So uh, was there a present resource? Yeah, he was nominated uh, an amount of salary and that salary was regularly uh, regularly accounted for by the company. Company every month records recorded his salary. So future economic benefits, yeah, that salary could have given him a future economic benefit. It's not relevant whether he took the benefits or not, but that cash can give you a benefit. Can be made reliably? Yeah, there was an amount, a liable amount. So based on these four conditions, that was an asset of that person regardless he ever received that or not. He actually pleaded that he never received that amount. It doesn't matter you receive it or not. If something has been established, there is past event, which created a present resource and which have future economic benefit and those benefits can be made reliably, you have to record an asset. So these are the comprehensive definition of the liability and asset. And the remaining two are the income, anything earned by the business. Uh, if business sells something, whatever it receives in return, that is the uh, income. And if business incurs some cost, that those are the expenses of the business. So moving to the next slide, please guys, if you have any question regarding these uh, uh, definitions, please you guys may ask. So Adia, am I audible to you? I'm here, you. Oh yeah, great, great, great. Uh, you actually joined late today, I guess. Yeah, I, I got the message late, sorry. Yeah, no, no problem, it's okay. Uh, I, I'm recording this lecture and you will be provided with the recording as well. Uh, the, the recording of the yesterday's, yesterday's lecture was uploaded in the Google Classroom, but unfortunately it had a larger size, so I could not upload it in the WhatsApp, but I am trying to uh, convert it. Yeah, can you share WhatsApp number? Yeah, show, show. this is my WhatsApp number. Yes, thank you, three, two, one. You can get this number from the group as well. But again, uh, this is my WhatsApp number. Sorry, uh, sorry, I written a wrong number. Please, please ignore that. This is not the one, please. The number was wrong. I am. I actually written my other number. This is. I'm going to write my next number, the right one, where you can contact me before the line zero five seven. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, this is the number uh, plus nine two 
double three one double four double nine zero five seven. This is my contact number where you can contact me. So please disregard the previous message, uh, Mr. Ahmed. Uh, I'm telling you that please disregard the previous number. This zero double three one number is the correct one. Okay. Uh, moving forward. <clears throat> So we discussed the definitions in detail. So there are two types of asset, non-current or fixed assets. And assets acquired to use in the business, we uh, already discussed this fact yesterday. So I will not go into detail of this topic, any asset acquired to use in the business, that is called, that is called a, non-current asset. Uh, business always has an intention to keep the asset for more than one accounting period. That means these, these are such assets that business had have an intention to keep the asset because they acquired it for the use. And then on the other hand, current assets, any assets acquired to resale, business always has an intention to sell the asset at the earliest, regardless if it is not sold in a year or two, even then it's categorized as current asset. Okay, now coming to the live, uh, recording, recording through double entry. Well, types of transaction. Uh, guys, we, we will encounter or we will be dealing with two types of transaction. One is the cash transaction and the second is the credit transaction. Cash transaction means whenever you purchase something and you pay that cash immediately, that is the cash transaction. And if you, purchase something and you promise to pay that amount after some days, 10 days, 15 days or so. So that transaction is known as credit transaction. So the cash might be a cash purchase or it might be a cash sale. Same goes with the credit, might be a purchase or it might be a sale. So if you're selling something and you're receiving the cash on the same at the same time, that's a cash sale. And if you are selling something and you have uh, told the customer that you can pay after 10 or 15 days. In that case, you will record the details of that customer because it's not uh, possible that you don't know anyone and you give him something, you sell him something and you say, it's okay, go away and pay me cash whenever you wish. So it's not the case. If you sell something on credit, you will definitely record the details of the customer and you will tell him that this is the date, due date by which you have to pay your due amount. So we will be dealing with two types of transaction. One is cash and the other is a credit transaction. Either it's a purchase or it's a sale. Well, these are the accounting heads just, just for your uh, integration guys. Yeah. These are the transactions. I had some battery issues. Yeah. Uh, these are the accounting heads, which I already told you that uh, after, uh, there, as a result of some transaction, there might be increase or decrease in these one of the five accounting heads. We shall be discussing some transactions, but before that, uh, how to record these transactions. Guys, this is a format which you have to follow to record the transaction. Remember, you have to follow the same format. You have to practice it on the page notebook. Uh, during the classes, when I will give you some, some assignment, you have to do that assignment on the notebook. You have to get a photo of it and WhatsApp me so that I will check that and then discuss that in the next class. When uh, you guys will get registered, we shall have detailed practice of this, but Today, I will definitely uh, get give you some introduction how to record the transaction. So first of all, you see uh, the first line is written on the bit of a left side and the next second line is written on the bit of a right side. So I have not divided the page into two sides, one in the left or one on the right. I just have written uh, one as on the left and the other a bit right. So left side is the debit side and the right side is the credit. So whenever we pass a transaction, 
first we record a debit effect and then we record a credit effect so what are the debit effects if you look in the above table you see there are five reasons for a transaction to be a debit means there might be a decrease in capital there might be a decrease in liability there might be an increase in asset there might be a decrease in income or there might be an increase in expense these are the five reasons for a debit transaction to be recorded and the same there are the five reason uh, to to record the transaction as a credit entry so this is the format you have to follow write dr dr is the denotation of uh, we denote the debit as a dr we denote it by dr and dot you can draw two lines under these two as well but if you do not draw two lines it's quite okay no problem name of account means you have to write what amount what is the account mean whether it's a building whether it's a bank loan whether it's a capital whether it's a cash whether it's a machinery it's a car it's a bike it's a person you have to write the name of the account we will create account of each and every person we will create the account of each and every item we will create let's say if we have three buildings we will create the account three accounts of the each building separately if we have five machineries we will create the account of the five machineries allah we will create five accounts one for each machinery if uh, those are separate machineries so every item has its own account so we will debit the uh, that account we will write the name of that account which is being debited again the account is not the reason to be debited we shall discuss it later on so what are the reasons then uh, give a space and write down a amount means what amount is to be recorded here comes the amount and then next is a reason here you have to record what is the reason of the debit as i told you there are five reasons you have to record the reason among these five means you can record here decrease in capital you can write here decrease in liability you can write here increase in asset or decrease in income or increase in expense so the reason is just one of these five so again move to the next line go a little bit right side right credit cr is denotes the credit name of account again write down the name what account we want to credit then the same amount amount should be the same because this is a single transaction which has two effects so if a transaction is one then the amount should not be the different then again write the reason reason again there must be one reason out of these five Uh, for the credit there could there can be increase in capital it can be increase in liability there is decrease in asset increase in income or decrease in expense so there are five reasons of debit you have to record any one of those five and there are five reasons of credit you have to record any one of those five so this is the format you have to follow we shall uh, practice some transactions and i will tell you how to record these transaction in this format mm. just as a reminder i have in, i have put this table in front of you so that you can see the table while recording the transaction uh, when recording the transactions you can uh, keep this in front of you so that you can see what is to be debited what format is to be followed as just i have done it on the top of the page so let's take an example Mr Andrew started business with 5000 in the bank and 1000 cash. Yeah, Mr Andrew started a business. He is the owner. He invested 5000 and deposited into the business bank account and 1000 deposited into business as a cash given to the business as a cash. So remember separate entity concept business is separate from the owner. accounting we are recording the transaction we will not record any transaction of the andrew we will record the transaction of the business so consider yourself a business you are the business and then just think what happened actually well if i think myself a business i am receiving 5000 in my bank 
and I'm receiving 1,000 as a cash. Well, these two are my assets. I can use this 5,000 in future. It can give me some economic benefits and uh, the same 1,000 also can give me economic benefits. So these are the both assets. Yeah, these are the both assets. So let's see how to record these. First of all, there is an increase in assets in the name of Well, there is an increase in the asset. So you see, bank is the asset, cash is the asset. So whenever asset is increased, it's a debit entry. So I will record, I will write DR debit. I will write the name of the account, which is the bank. Yeah, Aslan, want to say something? Yeah. Uh, we are running short of the time. Uh, the class may end in nine minutes, uh, but let's uh, hurry up and we shall uh, have some practice of at least two or three transactions. Okay. Uh, if business receives 5,000 in the bank, well, bank is an asset, cash is an asset. These are the two things from which business can get future economic benefits. So whenever asset increases, it is a debit entry. So I will record debit, name of account bank, amount is 5,000. And the reason is increase in asset. So the reason why I debited it is increase in asset. Okay, well, next is credit capital. Well, business, the owner has invested, Andrew, Andrew invested in the business. So whenever a business receives investment, there is an increase in capital as well. So capital, if capital increases, it's a credit entry. So I will write CR, again, name of account capital, amount is 5,000, the same one, and the reason is increase in capital. So the same transaction is to be passed by the cash. So cash is an asset. So I will record it debit, name of account cash, amount 1,000, is an increase in asset. As this cash is an investment, so there is an increase in capital. So capital is a capital. So I will record it as a credit entry. Credit, name of account is capital. 1,000 is the amount and it is increase in capital. Let's... Uh, we can record this entry as a mixed or uh, compound entry. How we can record it? We will add debit into debit and credit into credit. We cannot add bank or cash. So we will record debit bank, debit cash. But we can add both capital. It will make a 6,000, capital of 6,000. So we will record debit bank, 5,000 as increase in asset. Then debit cash, name of account is cash. That is amount is 1,000, that's increase in asset or and credit capital 6,000 because we have received the investment of 6,000, 1,000 in the form of cash and 5,000 in our bank account. So 6,000 is the increase in capital. So we have credited it. Well, the next example, next transaction, bought stationery by check 75. Well, who bought the stationery? Definitely Andrew might have bought it, but we shall record it that business bought the stationery. Whenever business buys stationery, stationery is an expense. So we will record it as a debit, name of account stationery, 70 pound, $75, it is an expense. Again, this is the technicality which I tell you that you have to identify if a business is buying some stationery, you have to identify what is happening. Yeah, one thing is very clear that a business is paying some cash from the bank or in the form of a cash. So cash or bank is asset, cash is asset, bank is asset, building is asset, car is asset, bike is asset. So these are all the assets. So whenever there is a decrease in assets, it's a credit entry. So you can record the credit first, but on the lower line, record the credit name of account is bank because we have we had paid this transaction by check. It means the amount is to be drawn from the bank. So the bank name asset has been decreased. The asset with the name of bank has been decreased with the 75 and we will record it as a credit entry.
okay uh, and the stationery is an expense remember always stationery is an expense until and unless you do not you don't do the business of stationery well if you are a stationery selling business then whenever you will purchase the stationery that is not the stationery that we call will be called purchases we will discuss this transaction later so debit stationery name of account stationery 75 why we debit it because stationery is an expense so whenever there is an increase in expense it's a debit it so uh, got this transaction moving to the third transaction bought goods on credit from t smart 2100 well whenever you buy goods you don't know what we are buying whenever it is written goods means the business has purchased what it has to sell means if you are doing a business of stationery you are purchasing stationery if you sell cars you are you are purchasing cars if you sell uh, water bottles you are purchasing water bottles means whatever you have to sell if you purchase that it is known as bought goods or it is called made purchases here you can say the sentence he made purchases so regardless whether it's written as bought goods or written as made purchases purchases is always an expense purchases is always an expense remember this statement so if purchases is an expense means there is an increase in expense in the business the name of expense is purchases so what we will do if there is an increase in expense it's debit entry i will record debit name of account purchases amount is 2100 reason is increase in expense well did did i pay something no it's on credit business did not pay anything but it has to pay so there is a liability increase what is the name of that liability that t smart because we have to pay the t smart as i told you whenever you sell something on credit you must know the details of the customer so same as whenever you purchase something from the on credit you must know the details of the person from whom you are purchasing so that later on you can pay him so you have to record the name of that person so the name of that person is t smart so you will record credit t smart payable the person to whom you have to pay something that is known as payable and its opposite is receivable the person from whom you have to receive something that's called receivable so but it's a payable because we have to pay 2100 as we have we have bought some goods on credit so credit t smart 2100 why we have credited because it's a liability so whenever there is an increase in liability it's a credit entry but we will write the name of that liability moving to the next transaction sold goods for cash 340 so i have sold the goods for cash it means i received the cash cash is an asset there is an increase in asset whenever it asset is increased it's a debit entry so i will record debit name of asset is cash amount 340 reason is increase in asset so if purchase is expense remember sales is always income purchases are always an expense and sales is always an income so credit is the sale because it's an increase in income amount is the same next is paid insurance by cash 290 again insurance is the expense so i am doing an expense of 290 a, a debit insurance 290 credit again insurance is debited because it's increase in expense and i have as i have paid cash cash is my asset so i will credit cash because it's decrease in asset so whenever asset decrease it's a credit entry okay moving to next transaction i am recording all the transaction at once and we shall discuss it one by one transaction number 6 is uh, got loan from bank 1000 well i as a business i received 1000 cash cash is an asset if asset is increased it's a debit entry so i will record debit name of a asset is cash amount and then reason increase in asset from where i got the cash it was a liability from the bank so again liability is increased the name of liability is bank loan and i will record it as a credit entry guys you can see the same transaction you can uh, have once you have this recording you will see this transaction and you can see this as we are running short of time the class will be ended in one and a half minute you just go through these transaction when you get this uh, recording this recording will also be shared to whatsapp uh, the previous one is also being uploaded 
uh, I will share the, the same one as soon as it's uploaded. And I will definitely share this uh, recording as well. So do not worry about it. You can see these transactions and we'll have some more transactions uh, in recording. You can pause this and you can see these transactions, but once we have registered, we shall discuss these transactions once again and some more transactions as well. So please, you guys, if you guys have any question, you can ask through WhatsApp, you can ask uh, in the class as well, or uh, you can have the practice at your own. So from me, it's a goodbye, take best care of you, uh, good night, if good day, if there is some uh, country which is you now starting a day, good day and the good night guys. Hello. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, yes, it's enough for tonight, sir.